Hello and welcome to the Excel VBA tutorial for beginners. In this video, we'll talk about arrays. So what are arrays after all? Let me take a step back. In the previous video, we learned what variables are. Variables store data in the computer's memory. And guess what? So do arrays. But arrays can store sets of data or multiple variables of the same data type. See this example here. We have a variable to store each month of the year. So variable one is January, variable two is February, and so on. So that would take 12 variables to store each month. We can store all 12 months in just one array. Let me show you in Excel. Let's add the months here in column A. So that's range A1 to A12, right? So an array can also be seen as a range of data. If we want to store this data set, we would use an array. Let's do it. We can name arrays following the same rules that apply to variables, and we declare them in the same way too. So we can use dim, static, public, but there's a small difference. An array declaration generally requires the number of array elements in parentheses, and that's for fixed size arrays. If not specified, the size can be changed during code execution, and that's a dynamic array. We're going to see that later. We could declare an array for this example in several ways. So, for example, dim month array 11, and I'll get to that in a moment, and as a string. So that's exactly the same format we were using for variables. Now, we could also do dim month array 0 to 11 as a string. That's a total of 12 elements, right, starting at 0. And we could also do, and this probably makes more sense, dim month array 1 to 12 as a string. Every fixed size array has a lower bound and an upper bound implicit in the array declaration parentheses. In all these three cases here, the array is declared with 12 elements, and they are string values. In the first two cases, the lower bound is 0, while in the last case, the lower bound is 1. So if only one of the values is given, that's the upper bound, and Excel sets the lower bound to 0. But in many cases, and probably in this month's example, it makes sense to have 1 as the lower bound. So we can use this other declaration, 1 to 12, or option base 1 in the declaration sections here at the top of the module. So with option base 1, this one here is going to start now at 1, so and it's only going to have 11 elements, so we need to change this to 12. The second example would keep starting at 0, from 0 to, to 11, and the last example will be the same. So uh, any array declared with only the upper bound will start at 1. We can use lbound and ubound functions to get the lower and the upper bound numbers as follows. So let me show you. My array upper, we're going to put it in this variable, so equals ubound month array. And if we display this in a message box, for example, it's going to give the upper bound of this array, which is 12. Or we can also get the total number of elements in the array in this way. So my array total elements would be u-bound of month array minus l-bound of the month array plus 1, and that would be the total number of elements. To assign values to an array, we need to specify the index for each item within the dimension in parentheses. So here's how we add month names to an array. Month array 0 equals January. Month array 1 equals February. And so on. Or if we keep the option base up there, or if we declare it with 1 to 12, that would be actually 
month array one for January, uh, month array two and three. And now that's simply the way to read the value in an array uh, is with month array three. So if we put that in a message box, it will give us, uh, in this case, March. But there are other ways or other methods to populate arrays in VBA. For example, considering that the data is in range A1 to A12, we could rather assign values to the array looping through the range. And we've learned how to use loops in the previous video. So if you don't remember, please check it out. So let's declare R, for example, for row as an integer. And then for R equals 1 to 12, month array r equals range a r dot value. So it's going to get the value of each cell in column A, so from 1 to 12, and it's going to put it in the array. Now our array is populated with the data in range A1 to A12. Let me show you that here. This is the locals window. We're going to talk about this later in the tutorial. But for now, this shows the array and the array elements. We can, of course, get the value of each element, of any element, uh, as explained earlier. So if we say message box month array 12, that will be December. There is yet a more efficient way to do it. We can directly assign the contents in a range to the array with the value property. But in this case, the variable needs to be declared as a variant, though. And the array will have two dimensions. We're going to talk about that later. But unfortunately, that makes things a bit more complicated to access the data. But that's other possibility. So that would be the month array as variant. And then month array equals range a1, a12, dot value. Let me comment all that here and show you in the locals window. As you see, now it has two dimensions there, despite we just have data in one column. So that has created a two-dimensional array. We're going to talk about multi-dimensional array later. We can also assign values to an array using the array VBA function. This function returns a variant containing an array. So it also requires the array to be declared as a variant. So we do that like weekday array. Let's have another array and we declare it as a variant. And then we simply have weekday array equals array. And this is the array function. And then we put the elements here. For example, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. And we can retrieve and display the data in the array as we did before with the index in the parentheses. So for example, if we say weekday array four and we put it in a message box, that will be that. We can clear the contents of an array and free the space in the memory using the erase statement. So simply as erase month array, and we can erase several arrays in, in one line separated by comma, so comma weekday array. Now let's talk about multidimensional arrays. In the examples above, we have seen arrays with just one dimension. But arrays can have more than one dimension. That's having more than one index inside the parentheses separated by a comma. Let's have a look at an array with two dimensions that stores the numbers of a Sudoku puzzle. So dim Sudoku puzzle 129,129 as integer. I have here in this other sheet a Sudoku solution. So we could manually assign the values of this puzzle or, or of this solution to an array, specifying the row and column numbers in the grid. So the row is the first dimension, and the column is the second dimension of the array. So for example, Sudoku puzzle 1, 1 equals 5. Sudoku puzzle 
1 comma 2 equals 2. 1 comma 3 is 1 and so on. Or Sudoku puzzle 2 comma 1 equals 3. Uh, 3 comma 1 is 9, etc. But we would rather loop through the range to fill the array as shown earlier. In this case, having two four next loops for rows and columns, or a for each loop for each cell in the range. Or we can assign the value of the range directly to the array, as also explained earlier. And that's the faster way to do it. So we could do dim sudoku puzzle as variant, and then sudoku puzzle equals range a1 to i9 dot value. And now to get a particular number in the Sudoku, we use the index for each dimension, which corresponds in this example to the row and column in the range, because the range starts in cell A1, so row 1 and column 1. So to get the number in the center of the grid, that would be Sudoku puzzle 5 comma 5. If we put that in a message box, we're going to get this number here, right? That's number 1. Now let's see what dynamic arrays are. A dynamic array is an array that does not have any set size, or like those we have seen before. It is declared without the upper bound or range number of array elements by leaving the parentheses empty. So that would be dim my array parentheses is empty as an integer, for example. Then it can be declared with a given value during program execution with redeem. That can be useful sometimes when having dynamic data that the macro needs to process later. So redeem declaration works in the same way deem does. So for example, that would be redeem my array 9. But let's see an example to understand this better. So let me move to another worksheet here. And we're going to add here um, the weekdays from Monday to Friday only, only the weekdays. And we're going to put that into an array. But let's say we don't know how long or how big is going to be this data set. So we will declare our array dynamically. And then we're going to set this to to an object variable. And we've learned about variables and object variables in the previous video. So let me call this data range. And it's going to be a range variable. And we're going to set data range equals to um, whatever data we have around range 1 using the current region property. And we've covered the current region property and many other properties of the range object earlier in this tutorial. I think it was in part four. So have a look there if you don't remember how that works. But this will basically give us the range of data around A1. In this case, it's clear we have five rows of data. But imagine you have a large data set. This could give us the exact data. Then once we know the data, Let's set the data rows. So let's let's get the rows of data in this data set. And this is going to be the data range dot rows dot count. OK. And now, now that we know how many rows of data we have, now we can redeem our dynamic array. And we're going to have it as big as, I mean, we're going to have as many elements as rows. So we're going to put here data rows. OK. Now, the data we're using here is, is text, actually. So we're going to change here. It's not an integer anymore. It's going to be a string value. And the other thing we want to change, we want, we want to add option base here, option base 1, because then our array will start at 1. So and it will match with the number of the row. Now we can start a loop for R, for example, from 1 to data rows. And we can populate our array for R 
equals range a and r dot value and we move to the next row so let me put, put a toggle here to show you how that looks like and I will explain all of these uh, tools, the, the back tools and, the, and some other and the view in the last video in this tutorial. So if I run this, you see here we have the, our array and our array has five elements from one to five. And now for each array element, we have uh, the weekday. And that's how we use redeem. Now, if we want to add now some more data to this array, Let's say we want to add Saturday and Sunday. We should redeem again my array up to seven elements in this case. We have five and now we want to put two more. The problem is every time we redeem an array, it deletes the existing data. So if we want to preserve the existing data, we need to use the preserve statement. So we would use redeem preserve two more elements and now we could actually add um, the, uh, the sixth element that would be Saturday and my array seven that would be Sunday and now if I put a toggle here and I run this we have our array here let me move it up and as you see now it has seven, right? The first five elements and then it added two new elements and we added the, the values for those elements here. So that's how we work with arrays in Excel VBA. In the next video, we're gonna talk about message and input boxes. See you then.